Hi, so I'm Charlotte Fraza, a third year PhD student in computational neuroscience. And today I really want to talk about the topic of studying during your free time. So I have to go to my PhD from about nine to five every day. And there I do general tasks such as giving lectures, doing programming, etc., etc. But actually during my free time, I love to learn about new topics as well. And so for me, I spend almost around at least one hour to two hours every day to work on this YouTube channel and to work on different type of creative pursuits outside of my PhD and today I really wanted to give you some tools, tricks, techniques such that you can also hopefully study a topic that's outside of your main job because I think for me at least it gives so much energy for my main pursuit which is my PhD to study something else on the side because actually if you have this kind of balance in your life between two things that you really enjoy I think both of them can kind of intertwine and give energy towards each other so I think the most common challenge that all of us face when trying to study during our free time is energy and I notice at least for myself that a lot of times I just don't have enough energy to push myself towards studying and this is really a bottleneck so usually I do have for example one or two hours in the evening that I could spend on studying or learning a new topic but when I try to push myself towards that I notice that it's actually really hard to get myself motivated so today I want to give you some tricks that I've learned over the years to kind of get over this first hump and to kind of get into the flow of studying some topics that do actually give me energy once I'm finally studying them. So the first tip I want to give is to optimize for your curiosity type. So one of the books I'm reading lately is Curious Minds and that's by Perry Zern and Danny Bassett. And Danny Bassett is actually this professor in computational neuroscience and I really like the work that they are doing. So if you are interested I would definitely recommend looking up their work as well. But they talk about three types of curiosity that people usually have or that people usually follow when looking at curiosity. So the first type they argue is the busybody. So the busybody makes it their business to know about everything and anything. They want to know as much as possible and like a butterfly, flit about from topic to topic. The second type is the hunter. So conversely, the hunter has this super focused curiosity and they tirelessly track down their discoveries like a hound. And the last type is the dancer. So the dancer leaps creatively true knowledge, relying on their imagination. And in the book, they dive way deep into these three di different archetypes within curiosity. And they also say these archetypes are not necessarily fixed within any one person. So it could be that you're one day a little bit more a busybody or a hunter and the next day a little bit more a dancer. But I do think most of us have a preferred style. And I know for me, I'm very much the dancer type, I would say. It's more that I like to flit from topic to topic and kind of combine them together in a creative way. But when I really deep dive into a topic, I usually get bored quite fast. So I like more the beginning of a learning process, like seeing how I can combine different topics and really thinking about how I could creatively link these two. Whereas I know, for example, I think my professor is a little bit more a hunter and he really clamps down on one question and then searches for the answer of that question for days. And I think if you think about your curiosity type and you try to think in your life how you can actually lean into that type instead of trying to force yourself down down into another type, you will actually find that you have so much more energy for studying different types of topics at the end of the day. So after you've decided what kind of type of curiosity you have, I think it's nice to think about intentional defaults. So intentional defaults is a topic I think I learned from the channel from Ali Abdal, but it's something I've been thinking a lot about lately in my life. So intentional defaults are the default behavior that you would do in a certain space, for example, or a certain time of day. So what I'm trying to do lately is every time I come home from uni, immediately I start doing something for the YouTube channel. And that can be anything. It can be or writing a script or making a thumbnail or learning a new type of editing technique. But because this is my intentional default when I come home and also when I sit in this space, it kind of is ingrained in my memory or in my behavior to do that every time after I come home. And I think by having this intentional default of working on the YouTube channel at a set time and a set place, it really allows me without too much friction to work on these goals that I have and work on this new type of curiosity that I want to explore without really having to force it down on myself. And the last topic I want to talk about is input versus output goals. So output goals are the goals that most of us think of when we think of goals. So for example, for self-studying, it would be something like I will know how to edit or I will make a perfect YouTube video or I 
know how to do, all, I will get an A on my exam for mathematics. Whereas like input goals are actually the input you put into your goals. So it's for example, every day I try to work on the YouTube channel for one hour. And I think when I think of goals, input goals are a lot easier to optimize for in that sense. Also to get some kind of reward from. So when I look throughout my life, I usually try to focus on input goals and not so much output goals. Because output goals per definition are kind of outside of our locus of control, whereas input goals are really what we can ourselves put into a certain topic. So yeah, these were just three really short tips that I wanted to give you and I mostly want to push you towards reading this book because I'm highly enjoying it. And if you know your curiosity type, I would actually be curious to know what it is. So put it down in the comments below and otherwise see you next week. Bye.